Joseph is there. Thank you for joining us today. This is the EACC Presents series that we present from time to time. So I want to thank you on behalf of the hosts, Eddie Apewe, Shiva Takasta, and myself, EACC welcomes you. Today we will discuss Ethiopian conflict in the age of disinformation and the lack of empirical data. As you know, some of our heroes that are present here today have been attacked for truth. And we honor them for that and truth must stand. We will discuss that thoroughly today. We also uncover the plot the WHO leader, Dr. Tedros has set for Ethiopia. Using his global platform as a leader, the WHO leader has negotiated for Tigray Liberation Front. He actually makes him look like a victim, whereas Ethiopia is the villain. And this is absolutely false. And unfortunately, he's been given a world stage to perpetuate fiction instead of fact. As a WHO leader, he should be impartial. Dr. Tedros avoids mentioning thousands of health facilities that are destroyed by TPLF in Amhara and Afar regions. He knows the United Nations deems it a war crime to destroy hospitals, but the war crimes do not exist when they take place in Afar and uh, Amara region, according to Dr. Tergos. And that's very sad. He's acting as a TPLF leader in absentia. He travels with an envoy to the United States to meet with policymakers such as Nancy Pelosi and then Menendez. He also recently met with the uh, newly elected prime minister of Somalia to affect policy in the Horn of Africa. And basically, he wants to resuscitate the TPLF back to power, and we can't let that happen. So with that, we're going to address uh, some of the illegality of Tedros' activity today in detail. Uh, we need to really pay close attention to those of two issues I outlined, which we're going to be discussing. Um, we, have, we are at crossroads. This is very critical, because if the negotiations on about Welkait goes in the way that Tedros Andanum wants it. Welkait goes, then goes Ethiopia. So we are at the crossroads, ladies and gentlemen, and history is in the mirage of flowing sea and the current wave of Western atmosphere is tilted to bury our beloved country, Ethiopia. So we must act, act now. And so for that, we have brought here to you um, act from work from academia, researchers, lawyers, and authors and advocates together. Join us and, and stay with us until the end. We're not gonna keep you too long. And then I hope you will enjoy this and we will be motivated to action after we leave this. We are not going to be the same again, I hope. So without further ado, I'll ask Shiva to introduce the chairperson of EACC. Thank you, Shiva. Thank you, Esqual, and um, thank you, everyone. Welcome um, to this panel. I, I am, has been looking forward to this, and I think it's going to be a fabulous discussion. Um, I want to uh, thank all of you for being here. Um, but with no further ado, let me introduce our um, chair for EACC, Deacon Josep Teferi. Um, he's the chair of the Ethiopian American Civic Council. He's also a successful business owner for over 40 years in Colorado. EACC is the largest and oldest civic organization that advocates for human rights and justice in Ethiopia with over 750,000 subscribers. EACC is the first civic organization to hire lobbyists and PR firms to fight the TPLF. Deacon Yosef is a widely regarded expert in Ethiopia um, on Ethiopia and the Horn of Africa geopolitics. One of his notable achievements was that he co-wrote the human rights Bill um, HR 128 and provided congressional testimony. HR 128 passed the US House of Representatives with a unanimous vote. The bill supported civil and religious liberties in Ethiopia and condemned the TPLF. Uh, but above all these things, Deacon Yosef is an amazing individual um, and uh, honored to introduce you, Deacon. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for everyone to, for, for coming and uh, joining us today. 
Um, thank you, Shiva, for that wonderful introduction. Um, I'm a, a long time admirer of your work, your commitment. Um, and I, I pray every day that we have hundreds like you, uh, especially Ethiopian women, uh, really um, taking the stage uh, to lead us, to advise us, to give us perspective that we have uh, we've, we have we have not had uh, for for a long time. So thank you for your exemplary role, your leadership, for what you do, and God bless you and your your family. Um, this is a wonderful session, and uh, I, I I will briefly say the following: uh, It is wonderful to have Professor Ann Fitz, Gerald. Um, and our esteemed, uh, uh, wonderful friend, John and, and, and David. Uh, today, there's a really a wide topic uh, that they will be addressing. Um, and also, I want to say to our community at large, um, we, we, got, we have to get used to the idea, especially as a diaspora uh, community, how to broaden our our influence and community uh, activism by including and reaching out to the larger community and especially with the very strong uh, leaders uh, like the guests uh, that are with us today. Um, and a couple of points that I want to make is this. Um, one is you've heard in the introduction uh, uh, this um, Harassments that uh, that uh, Professor Ann uh, is facing. This is a harassment against truth. This is harassment against us, and the world cannot sit and just watch this as if this is a, a personal issue. It's not. At the same time, we need to realize that. Imagine if they could do this with impunity in a, in, in, in a diaspora, how they might have been, how um, lethal they must have been when they were in power for 27 years and they don't have to account for anyone. This is in retrospect to see why the Ethiopian people finally said enough. Um, and so they're not out of their elements. They're not, this is not a new experience for them, but they have to be brought to justice. They have to be reported. And our community have to be vigilant about this. This is not about Professor Ann. This is about truth, uh, the law, and, and how we have to behave ourselves with all our differences that we cannot allow and tolerate act of terrorism, uh, which harassment and, and bullying is all about. Um, and we don't know where that would lead. Therefore, this is a responsibility for all of us to be involved in this. In some form, in some shape, we all have faced this. But this is about time that we collectively need to, re to react. So I want to say to um, our hero, uh, Professor Ann, you are a hero for advocating the truth, advocating for your knowledge based on facts, based on your own personal uh, uh, research. Um, this, therefore, it, it all affects us in the, in the degree and level as it would affect you. Um, we want to thank your uh, conscious leadership on this at the time when it is very rare to find because TPLF, uh, aware with all, with their looted treasure of the Ethiopian poor people's money, have virtually were capable of corrupting uh, the media, the politicians, the academy, and, 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 and so on and so on. So thank you for your, your leadership, your consciousness, your passion, and being uncorruptible. It means a lot in this day and age. And just therefore, um, I want to say uh, your fight is our fight. Your voice is our voice. We thank you. 
A hundred million people in Ethiopia thank you for telling the truth, not for taking sides. And you never do. You just tell things as it should. In fact, what other parties, um, that is non-TPLF and FUC and your own uh, uh, judgment are out of line or not, have not done things uh, uh, properly. I've heard you uh, speak volume and, and saying, this is not right. And therefore, for anyone to come in, in a level like they are now coming at you, they are standing and, 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 and basically uh, against the, anything that is truthful. Therefore, um, I, I wanna just reaffirm to you, your fight is our fight and because you've made our fight, the fight for truth, your fight. And so I wanna say that, and equally, I want to uh, thank uh, David uh, for being um, forthcoming with all the research that he has been able to do um, for the uh, all the trespass and you know, particularly uh, uh, Dr. Tedros Adhanom. It's really tragic to see that the world body, the United Nations is compromised on a level like this, to actually witness this to happen in our generation, in our lifetime. So the crime this individual is perpetrating is not only to um, Ethiopia, but it's to the world at large because of the position that he, um, he he's on today. Um, and is this what the West wishes for Africa? Is this what they ultimately think is a good governance? Uh, empowering a, a group like TPLF, uh, funding them and, and, and giving a collateral loan to the poor nation like Ethiopia, but for them to siphon and, and illicitly break out all these funds now to create all these false uh, narratives today? Is this the best they, that the West wishes for Africa and how Africa deserves to have good governance is to support a regime like this? that it has terrorized our people uh, while it was in power, and now it's misinformation uh, 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 on a global level. Uh, therefore, it is one thing that to say that we are harvesting what the West has empowered on Ethiopia for almost half a century, but it's about time that we all in unison speak in, in the crimes that they have perpetrated and to continue to do that even as we speak. And so I, you have not come to hear from me, so I don't want to take any more time. And it is really heartfelt thank you to all of you for joining us today. David Steinman, um, so I am so glad uh, you're here. David Steinman uh, is an American democracy promotion expert and he's best known and long serving foreign opponent of the TPLF. Mr. Steinman was the first to expose the, to the West the TPLF's human right abuses, theft of $30 billion and a hidden genocide. Mr. Steinman is very well known for publishing a highly praised investigative historical novel called Money, Blood and Conscious. It uses popular culture to teach Westerners about TPLF's criminal past attracting audiences with an entertaining Ethiopian American love story, which included the nonfiction section of describing Dr. Tedros Adhanom's responsibility for Ethiopian crimes against humanity. And that formed the basis for his December 2020 complaint to the International Criminal Court. The news was featured on London's Times front page, created a global media sensation and that alerted hundreds of millions of Westerners about TPLF's crime. He was also nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize in 2019. And we want to thank him for his extensive work and please join me in welcoming David Steinman. Thank you, uh, thank you very much for that lovely introduction and uh, for organizing this event. Um, uh, the uh, work that you do is really very laudable. And I'd also like to uh, thank and compliment uh, Professor Ann on the uh, remarks that she just made. Uh, 
she's really remarkable. Um, yes, uh, I am uh, opposed to the TPLF for many, many years. I originally um, became opposed to them because I believe that Ethiopia needs good government and democracy in order to solve its economic problems, especially in order to feed its people. And I saw as early as 1991 that the TPLF was taking the country in a different direction in which the poor would be denied the rights and empowerment to um, demand uh, that they be properly taken care of. And this led me into an antagonistic relationship uh, with the TPLF. Um, even in the early 90s, uh, they were publishing letters in the Washington Post and other newspapers about me saying that I was insulting the nation. Uh, but I felt it was very important that their uh, crimes uh, be um, revealed and that the West uh, change its uh, support for them. Uh, this was a very difficult problem. Uh, and for many, many years, I was the only Westerner who was um, opposed to the TPLF. Uh, but finally, I uh, was able to begin to expose more and more what they were doing. And over time, um, the uh, West uh, began very, very slowly to feel uh, a little bit uh, less supportive of them until finally in 2018, uh, we saw an actual um, end to uh, Western support under Trump. And uh, that's you know when the uh, TPLF ended its formal uh, rule. And I was very hopeful that that would really represent an important step forward uh, for Ethiopia finding um, you know, more accountable um, government. And I was you know, very disappointed that the TPLF um, you know, continued to destabilize the country and to uh, create you know, so many problems that still endanger Ethiopia's poor even today. Um, I became especially interested in the problem of um, Pedro Sidhanan. Uh, I felt that he had become a, um, a very important part of the international support that the TPLF was continuing to enjoy and certainly did not deserve. And um, I you know, began to uh, think that one of the big problems going on still in Ethiopia is of course the um, Western governments uh, treating um, the Ethiopian government and the TPLF with supposedly um, you know, equal um, uh, support, which they should not be doing in the first place. So they should uh, not be supporting the uh, TPLF at all. Um, and part of this problem is because uh, the uh, officials in the present U.S. government have had uh, relationships, you know, with the TPLF for so many years, a lot of personal relationships there, and Tedros is a big part of encouraging these relationships. Um, but another thing that contributes to that problem is the lack of public interest and public attention in the West. Uh, you know, we see, of course, so much media attention being given to Ukraine, but I would uh, say that the uh, problem in Ethiopia certainly uh, threatens as many lives, uh, if not more, uh, yet the attention is much less. Uh, but this is an old story that Westerners uh, have tended uh, not to really give Ethiopia the uh, attention that it deserves, um, if not on a strategic basis, which is important at the very least on a humanitarian basis. So I began to think about what could be done to try to create more Western awareness of what's really gone over there 
uh, and try to generate uh, more public interest in this uh, problem. And I've worked on this problem for many, many years. Um, originally, I began by exposing the amount of corruption that was going on. Um, I showed that the uh, TPLF had stolen an amount of money that was equal to all the US foreign aid, uh, which was about $30 billion. And the TPLF uh, leadership had embezzled a, a similar amount, basically making all of that US effort and um, investment um, lost and, and a wasted um, program. Um, and I uh, tried to expose the uh, human rights abuses beginning with uh, Dr. Uh, Ashrat uh, Waldeus. Um, but more recently, uh, as events have changed, I've become uh, especially interested in uh, Tedros Adhanom. And I believe that uh, Tedros, as long as he stays in that position, is um, playing a very important role in sustaining the TPLF. And as long as the TPLF remains uh, sustained, it's going to continue to be a destabilizing and dangerous force in the region uh, that uh, Ethiopia definitely uh, cannot afford to uh, tolerate and will not um, be able to do really well as long as those top TPLF leaders remain in power. So uh, the question is, you know, how to um, undermine uh, their position. And part of that involves public opinion. Uh, and public opinion, of course, affects in uh, the West, the um, policies uh, to uh, some extent as well. So there were actually two different ways that I have recently been working on trying to um, expose the truth about uh, Tedros Adhanom. The uh, first way was to um, expose uh, the crimes against humanity in which he was involved when he was uh, one of the top um, leaders in Ethiopia between 2012 and 2016. And um, a lot of people don't realize that he was the number three person in the government and therefore shared responsibility for all of the uh, criminality that was being carried out there in terms of the um, abuse of people, the uh, corruption, et cetera. Um, so uh, what I tried to do was to um, expose the, uh, some of the specific things that he did. Um, he was involved with trying to cover up threats to public safety down there. Uh, he tried to cover up a, a famine. He tried to um, uh, lie about the um, failure of the government to uh, reduce poverty. He actually exaggerated how much uh, the government had done with poverty reduction. And when in fact its poverty reduction programs had failed, um, he uh, tried to uh, cover up massacres of people. And he also uh, tried to cover up the abuse of journalists who were uh, working very hard to try to expose the truth. And um, all of these things um, were, of course, um, very, very serious crimes that never really got the attention that they deserved. And I came to see that the best way, perhaps, to publicize that truth would be to make a, a complaint to the International Criminal Court about him. So in uh, 2020, I did file a complaint uh, with the uh, International Criminal Court. Now, of course, Ethiopia is not a member of the International Criminal Court, but there is still a way for the ICC to have jurisdiction. And that's when uh, a crime committed in Ethiopia um, winds up hurting another country, which is a member of the ICC, like Kenya, Djibouti, Uganda, South Africa, et cetera. So it turned out that uh, Tedros's crimes in Ethiopia were forcing Ethiopians to run into these other countries. And that uh, then made um, what he was doing uh, subject to uh, ICC jurisdiction. 
Uh, there is another way that the ICC could have jurisdiction over uh, Tedros, which would be if the uh, present Ethiopian government uh, made a formal request of the ICC, a prosecutor to take uh, jurisdiction just in Tedros's specific case as an exception to uh, Ethiopia's uh, non-membership, uh, but the uh, government hasn't done that yet. So um, the ICC told me that they needed additional evidence um, on top of what I've already submitted. So there are now um, new um, campaigns going on to gather additional evidence about what Tedros did in Ethiopia that caused Ethiopians to flee across the border. Uh, and most specifically, what he did in Ethiopia that was ethnically based. Uh, it's important for the ICC jurisdiction that uh, Tedros's crimes in Ethiopia were because of uh, the victim's ethnicity and not because they belonged to a, a military uh, organization. And there certainly are uh, plenty of such examples, uh, but we're uh, still uh, gathering uh, and welcoming from the you know, public uh, additional um, information to uh, build this case and strengthen the uh, complaint uh, to the ICC. Um, now, in terms of getting uh, Western opinion uh, more involved in this, the problem is that Westerners generally don't care that much about Ethiopia or other African countries for that matter. So uh, what I'm trying to um, emphasize in the um, education of the West is that the uh, cover-ups of threats to public safety that Tedros made in Ethiopia affect the West very much because what they mean is that the person in charge of the World Health Organization is someone with a history of covering up threats to public safety. So there's been a lot of debate about whether Tedros did collude with China in the early days of the COVID outbreak. And it's only when his Ethiopian cover-ups are exposed that it makes it more obvious that he did indeed conspire with China in the early days to uh, cover up the danger uh, from uh, COVID uh, because we have a behavioral pattern of uh, somebody who is willing to uh, sacrifice public safety as a favor to political patrons. So the fact that he had done it three, four, five times before in Ethiopia makes it much more obvious that he did indeed do the same thing with China. And um, by bringing out the Ethiopian cover-ups and making it clear that he really did do it with China again, we're now proving that the World Health Organization is indeed led by a man with a proven history of sacrificing public safety as political favors for his patrons. And I believe that uh, to the extent that uh, Westerners become aware of how his Ethiopian crimes against humanity represent a danger to them in the current health crisis is one way to get the public much more interested in um, Tedros. And by doing so, that can help to reduce uh, public support for the uh, TPLF at the same time, because his story is of course, uh, very you know, well connected to the TPLF story as well. So exposing what he did in Ethiopia is a very important part of trying to lower um, Western support for the TPLF in general. Um, the uh, other thing that uh, I'm trying to do in that respect is to get more people interested in Ethiopia's political problems than usual. 
I uh, initially began all the way back in the 1990s trying to raise Western awareness of the TPLF's criminality by publishing op-eds and encouraging journalists to write hard news on this uh, subject. And for many years, I was um, alone uh, in this uh, effort. Uh, but very, very gradually over many, many years, I was able to get you know, more and more journalists to begin covering the story, covering Ethiopia until you know, in the last few years, of course, there's been you know, quite a bit of, of publicity um, about Ethiopia. But it occurred to me that there are many people who don't follow the news about Ethiopia. They're not interested in uh, op-eds. They're not interested in hard news about Ethiopia and they still represent a majority of uh, Western public opinion. So I began to wonder, might there be some way to attract more people to the subject matter, even though they don't take a particular interest in the news itself? So that gave me an idea that I would create a piece of popular entertainment uh, that might attract people who would not normally be interested in Ethiopia. So I wrote a book called Money, Blood and Conscience and it combines investigative journalism uh, to be a historical novel, um, which is a love story. Between, it's an Ethiopian American love story set during the Meles uh, Zanawi dictatorship. And the idea was to use popular entertainment to attract um, Westerners who might not care about Ethiopia, but they enjoy a good love story to read the book. And they um, you know, will have fun reading the book. They'll be entertained reading the book. Uh, the reviews about the book, uh, fortunately, have been uh, you know, very uh, positive. People think it's very entertaining. But by the time they're finished reading it, they've also learned about Ethiopia's real history. So the entertainment attracts them into a situation where they will then learn and understand about what's really going on over there. And um, after the um, story, the romance ends, there's a short nonfiction afterward or author's note in which I explain more about the TPLF's real crimes against humanity. And I include a description of Tedros's uh, Ethiopian uh, cover-ups and Tedros's responsibility for Ethiopian crimes against humanity. And this was the actual basis for the original ICC complaint. Um, so the reviews that uh, Westerners are posting on the book's Amazon site show that the book does a very, very good job of educating Westerners about uh, the TPLF's crimes, about uh, Tedros's crimes, and that this could contribute to Western public opinion, which of course, you know, in the West uh, does uh, have some uh, influence uh, with, um, you know, the government. Um, but I need the help of the Ethiopian community to publicize the book. And so I'm asking um, every Ethiopian, please, to um, read the book, understand what it is, and then please tell your Western friends to read it. Um, if you have um, social media followings, uh, please uh, post on your social media a request for all of your Ethiopian friends to do the same thing, to read it and to encourage their Western friends to read it, to buy it for their Western friends, to tell their Western friends about it, but to do everything possible to encourage Westerners to read the book. And um, I think we can get some momentum started, uh, or I should say we can fuel the momentum that has already started and there are many examples that uh, other books throughout history have had a great deal of uh, influence in the American Civil War, for example, Uncle Tom's Cabin, 
uh, was extremely uh, influential with uh, public opinion. So I'm hoping to be able to do something similar here. And if anybody knows any Ethiopians who are particularly influential and who have very large followings, please ask them uh, to specifically um, post a request to their followers to read the book and to do everything possible to encourage Westerners to uh, read the book. So um, if you'd like to help with this um, project, uh, that's, you know, th that's what you could do. So uh, thank you very much for listening to, um, you know, what I've uh, shared with you today. And I just want to say that um, I really hope that with the right cooperation and the right effort, someday the uh, TPLF's influence in Ethiopia will be drastically reduced. And that's when I think Ethiopia will finally, you know, get a chance to uh, achieve the um, glory and the success that its wonderful people deserve. Thank you. I want to thank you again for this wonderful uh, webinar. Um, and I want, we want you to continue to do this. And I want to say finally that such an important uh, seminar like this will allow us to finally start to break in and talk from our own um, you know, shells, our own community, our own echo chamber, so to speak, to reach out to the larger community um, with people, educators like, uh, and journalists like David and so on. So I think we should need to continue to do this. And thank you for your insight, for really putting this thing together as well uh, and, and the rest of the team. Thank you again for coming. We appreciate uh, your work um, and we look forward uh, to continue to work with you. So thank you so much. Great job. I really admire you. Great job. Wonderful. Our heart is warmed. I don't think we'll go back the same way we came. Um, David, again, I want to thank you. He's financing this thing for the love of Ethiopia and for the love of truth out of his own pocket. There's also a GoFundMe. Don't forget. And let's not be faint at heart in, in, in the good work we're doing for advocacy, for truth, for championing truth against all odds. Like I said once, you know, they, I said they know, the US knows, the West knows the truth. They have enough intelligence. They know, and then they know we know, and then we know they know we know, but they still lie. So in the midst of that, we have to stay strong commit to our advocacy and keep going. I want to encourage all of you. I want to thank all of you for coming and participating. We will have another EACC serious webinars coming to you in about three months. And thank you for joining us. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. It was an honor. Thank you so thank much, you. everyone. Bye-bye.